For many men, it can be hard to know exactly what role we can or should play in working towards an end to You know what, Full Macintosh? That is an absolutely astute observation there. Men really do not know what their role is in combating sexism. Because if it's not, oh, you're useful allies, there's, oh, no, you can't be feminists because you're men. Oh, no, you're part of the problem. We need to call about 90% of you so that only 10% of you remain so that sexism can be, you know, nothing, something but a distant memory. And, oh, yeah, let's not forget that we have to pay women more than men or reduce men's wages so that the pay gap is gone. But I think we'll get through all of that soon. But first, the intro and not his. Hello everyone, this is Charlie Man Ugh! Damn it, I can't see a thing in this. How can men help? And how much or how little should we be helping? I think men should be helping as much as possible. In fact, I think we should be trying to get women off their asses and doing something to help the things that affect us. But of course, Full Mac, you're not going to be discussing things about that, are you? In this video, we will explore answers to those questions and share a few suggestions about how men can respectfully approach feminism and, critically, explain why it's beneficial for men to be involved. Respectfully handle sexism. Does that mean shut up, let the women do the talking, and not put any input whatsoever, even if it might actually be helpful? Basically, don't mansplain. Definitely don't manspread, and always click rather than clapping. Am I right, M Full Mac? Am I right? Am I right? And please, do explain how it's beneficial for men to be involved with feminism, because from what I've seen, it's quite damaging, but... Oh well, Full Macintosh, the arbiter of all that is moral in the world today, will be answering my question. First things first, because there's so much misinformation about feminism floating around out there in the cultural ether... What, that it's for equal rights? Hell yeah, that definitely, that definitely is misinformation, Full Mac, definitely. I, I wonder who keeps spreading all that misinformation that's uh, brainwashing loads of young women and, you know, causing loads of problems for men. Uh could possibly be me, but, you know, it, I, I guess it could be you, but I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. It's useful to quickly define what that term actually means. Oh, it couldn't possibly be the dictionary definition now, would it, Full Mac? Feminism is a socio-political movement with the central goal of ending sexism and dismantling gender-based oppression. That may have been only half true a hundred years ago, but now it's more about female supremacy than it is ending gender oppression, as if... In the, this day and age, women are oppressed. <laughs> oh, Full Mac, if only you knew. So contrary to common misconceptions... Oh yeah, and the experiences of Erin Pizzi and... are nothing but misconceptions. They're not the norm at all. I mean, it's not like feminists have always been, you know, horrible man-haters who will try and destroy any uh, doubters or people who disagree with them or people who actually fight them. I mean... <laughs> It's totally not a supremacy movement, is it? And it's totally not a hate movement geared towards the hatred of men. <laughs> of course not, it's just a misconception, says the, the white knight feminist, Full Macintosh. Feminism is not about man-hating. Oh really, Full Mac? Then how come Valo Solana said this in the Scum Manifesto? Life in this society being at best an utter bore, and no aspect of society being at all relevant to women, there remains to civic-minded, responsible, thrill-seeking females only to overthrow the government, eliminate the money system, institute complete automation, and destroy the male sex. Now, apparently that's just totally not a man-hating movement, but that's just one example. Or, if we're going to go a bit more mainstream than Solanus, although technically the scum Venom Mephesto has become even more man uh, mainstream than it used to be, uh, she says, feminists don't hate men, but it wouldn't matter if we did. I mean, they do anyway, but it doesn't matter according to her, but hey, that's just two examples. How about more? I feel that man-hating is an honourable and viable political act, that the oppressed have a right to class hatred against the class that are oppressing them. Robin Morgan, Miss Magazine Editor. But we can get go, get even more than that, Full Mac. Uh, the nuclear family must be destroyed. Whatever its ultimate meaning, the breakup of families now is objectively a revolutionary process, Linda Gordon. Of course, to do that, you've got to get rid of the fathers, obviously. And this is from my favourite, Andrea Dworkin. I want to see a man beaten to a bloody pulp with a high heel shoved in his mouth like an apple in the mouth of a pig. Well, that's totally 
Not man-hating, is it, full Mac? And how about this from Susan Brownmiller? Rape is nothing more or less than a conscious process of intimidation by which all men keep all women in a state of fear. When a woman reaches orgasm with a man, she is only collaborating with the patriarchal system eroticizing her own oppression. Sheila Jeffries. The more famous and powerful I get, the more power I have to hurt men. Sharon Stone, although I don't think she literally meant it. I don't know if she's a feminist or not. It, that doesn't matter, but... She's got a point there. And here's my f another favourite quote of mine, which I actually referenced before. The proportion of men must be reduced to and maintained by approximately 10% of the human race. Sally Miller Gearhart in the future, if there is one, is female. I could go on and on and on for Macintosh. But you would still deny that it is a man-hating movement. Or female supremacy. When a person is advocating for either the, the complete extinction of the male sex or a culling of it as if we're just badgers, you know, who are pests to women, then tell me that it's not about female supremacy. It's important to note that the feminist endeavour, as it's been defined by women like Bell Hooks, does not simply seek equal access for women within current systems of power but instead seeks to transform those systems and the values associated with them. Ah oh yes, yeah, so social control is your game, is it? You want to basically dismantle the current system we have, which is a meritocracy, into something that favours women only, and basically disfavours men. I mean, you will give some, you know, leeway to people who are minorities, like me, although that depends on when my white passing privilege is working, isn't it, full Mac? But that's basically what you're after. You're after a system that favours other people over others, which is basically what you're supposed to be against, what you're trying to implement. That's what you're after. Oh, you're also after a world where 10% of the population has to be men, but oh well, never mind. <laughs> so where do men fit into all of this? Yeah, full Mac, where do you fit in with this? Because it's clear to me that you're not welcome there, or at least you're just about tolerated. Well, well... Women have long been pointing out the ways in which men can benefit from feminism. Oh, pray tell, what are these ways that men benefit? Because I've seen nothing. I mean, sure, we have like, what, one shelter for domestic violence victims who happen to be men. But hey, we're benefiting from feminism. I mean, it's not like feminism is trying to help us or anything. I mean, in fact, I'd rage that they're trying to stop us from forming our own shelters. And actively challenge the government when they tell them that they have to help men or have their funding cut, but never mind, I, I mean, I'm sure there's just a few bad apples and it's just a misinformation by those evil MRAs, isn't it? And actively calling for men's participation in working towards ending sexism. You can't just say women are calling for it because not all women are feminists, 80% of women are not feminists. So you can't just go around giving me a generalisation and say women are calling for men to be f feminists when they're not. It's quite the opposite, in fact. Women are not calling for men to be feminists. Certain sects of feminists want men to be feminists, others do not. Others want to kill us, or to keep us out of the movement, because then they say that we're after you, we want your bodies, and we want to control the movement because we're the patriarchy, and we, all we have is evil intentions to oppress you. <laughs> I've heard none of these women. Please, tell me who these women are and quote them. As Bell Hooks writes in her landmark 1984 book, Feminist Theory from Margin to Center, Like women, men have been socialized to passively accept sexist ideology. Citation needed, Full Mac and Bell Hooks, that is an assertion without evidence. While they need not blame themselves for accepting sexism, they must assume responsibility for eliminating it. Men are not exploited or oppressed by sexism. Well, that's a goddamn lie, because men are treated as jokes when they report their wives for domestic violence. You know, have you heard of the Duluth model? Where, you know, basically women are automatically believed and that they get to keep the house and men are arrested just, you know, for anything from maybe a slap to an argument. Just shouting at someone can get you arrested and, and labelled as a domestic abuser. Let's not forget that there's hardly any shelters for men, and the problems are pretty much ignored. And let's not forget that male cancers are woefully under-researched and woefully underfunded, so that we simply do not have the means to help combat our own illnesses in comparison to women who have their own special days and special months. Yes, we've got Movember, but that's about it. And feminists tried to end it very recently, didn't they? Because it's sexist. 
I could go on and on, but I'd run out of examples by the end of your video. But there are ways in which they suffer as a result of it. Just contradicts yourself there. Men aren't oppressed or affected by it, yet we are. We are we're victims because of it. That's a stupid sentence. We either are affected by sexism or we're not at all. We're either oppressed by it or not. Please, make your mind up because it, that's a load of double-think nonsense right there. That bears repeating. Men are not exploited or oppressed by sexism. Uh, yes, we are exploited, actually. Who does all the nasty, dirty work that nobody else wants to do? Men. I'm talking about sewer workers, miners, uh, deep-sea fishing, etc, etc. No feminist is clamouring for women to be a part of those industries. But STEM fields? Oh yes, I wonder why. Oh, because they're positions of wealth and, hell, maybe even power. That's why you want the governments to be 50-50, etc, etc. Because you want to infiltrate places that you know will gain access to more power. You don't give a shit about the working man. Because why would you? You're a white, privileged, upper-class twonk. Full Mac. If anything, all my examples prove that men are victimised and oppressed by sexism. You have yet to prove how men are not victims, yet you've contradicted yourself by saying that we are victims of it. Are you trying to say we're victims of women's sexism? Well, we can't be, because that's one group's problems. No, we're affected by our own, but you're in self-doubt and using doublethink to get out of that mess. Clever. But there are ways in which we suffer as a result of it. And like I said, we are oppressed by it then. We do suffer from it. How can we not? You do realise suffer means the exact same thing as that other words in that context, right Josh? You do realise that, Full Macintosh? You just contradicted yourself. We either are or we are not. Please, make your mind up. None of this shitty language that you're using to hide the fact that men are exploited and abused by sexism even though they aren't, as you're trying to say, will, you know, fool people. Because we can tell that you guys are using doublethink and cognitive dissonance to further the myth that men are not victims of sexism, yet we are somehow falling victim to it anyhow, so we must be. Jesus Christ, when you look at it and you think about this, it doesn't make any sense. Bell Hooks has to be one of the dumbest writers ever around. How are these people even got jobs? We are taught early on that boys don't cry. Boys are allowed to cry, but in certain circumstances. We are told not to cry as such, more to, you know, get over yourself. Look, this shit's gonna happen to you. You're gonna have bumps and falls and trials and tribulations, but you have to basically fight for what you want and basically recover. It's not worth it, all these bad things. They're just not worth, you know, crying and being all upset about. Women, on the other hand, are not taught that. But I know where you're going with this. You're going to say that we just need to open up emotionally and feminism will be a wide open door for us. Yet at the same time, you're going to tell us that we can't be too emotional because then we'll be aggressive. That to show sensitivity or emotional vulnerability is a sign of weakness. It is, though. It is. You can get your emotions blackmailed and taken advantage of if you show weakness or too much sensitivity. There's nothing wrong with being a sensitive person. A lot of men are sensitive, in varying degrees, but men are sensitive, but in a different way to women. We can't allow ourselves to show too much weakness, or we get pushed over by other people. We're a competitive gender, and we have to be strong. That's not a bad thing, that's a good thing. This is what has built this civilization. But, it's right, you can't show too much weakness. Your emotions can cloud you, like, and do stuff that you wouldn't usually do, if you were thinking logically. That's why we don't do that shit. But, you know, apparently that's a problem. That's toxic masculinity, isn't it, Full Mac? Men are discouraged from practicing nurturing, caregiving, compassion, and compromise for the same reasons. Um, no, we're not. Citation needed. I've met many compassionate men in my life. Probably more so than any feminist women that I've met. I, I don't think most of them are compassionate at all. There's only, what, two? Camille Paglia... Actually, no, three, now that I think about it. There's the girl who's doing the Red Pill documentary, Camille Paglia, and of course Christina Hoff Summers. They are the only ones that I think that have any real compassion for anyone. I've met more non-feminist women and men who are compassionate than feminists. Certainly more compassionate than you. We are not taught not to be compassionate. Men have to be compassionate. You've got to be compassionate. We are taught empathy. Well, you're not taught. It's with you from birth, but 
We are taught to be empathetic to people, to care for people, but we care about people in a different way to women. It's a different way of nurturing. It's not a bad thing. And citation needed once again for all that bullshit. So there is an enormous amount of pressure placed on men to prove our manhood by acting tough, projecting strength, and repressing our emotions. No, it's not about proving manhood. A true man does not prove his manhood. He proves how good of a man, a person he is, by doing good and all that bullshit. And no, men don't repress their emotions. They express it in a different way. That is not repression. You know, not, you know, emailing and Facebooking and airing out all your emotions to the world publicly is not something that men do. I've learned to not do that. I used to be a bit like that, but not so much now. It's not a sign of repression. We just don't do that shit. We don't feel the need to tell people our problems unless we really need to. That is not repression. That is simply a form of expression. But you won't understand this because you were not brought up to be a man or compassionate or any of these things that you think that we're not. You were brought up to be the cold, callous person that you think we are. It's all projection, people. This is compounded by the fact that men are often more admired for being aggressive, dominant, and violent. Why are you using the live-action Call of Duty Black Ops 3 trailer to show that men are being told to be violent and that we're respected for being aggressive and violent and all these things, when that's a joke trailer of this guy who's basically a keyboard warrior and then he gets his ass kicked by a girl? Funnily enough, that's the joke. He goes around doing kill streaks, headshot, holy shit type things, and he gets battered. You know, like I think he got hit in the back or something, or he got squashed. I can't remember exactly. But that's a joke. That's not real. They're not telling us to be violent. They're telling us to have fun in multiplayer and be careful. You may be on a kill streak, but you will get pwned at least once or twice. So <laughs> that's not. The message that we're receiving, it's meant to be a fun game, you muppet. And no, men are not admired for that shit. They're not admired for that. They're admired for hard work, success, compassion, funnily enough, and other things. But no, you said, we're only admired for being violent and aggressive and evil, but <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, citation needed. Then for being cooperative vulnerable and empathetic. Men are cooperative and empathetic, otherwise we would not have survived as a human race, you fucking idiot. The species would be extinct if men were not compassionate, were not cooperative, and they did not have any empathy whatsoever. You idiot! And what's this about vulnerable? To show vulnerability is a weakness. Look, everyone's vulnerable to some degree. We're not infallible. We can all die from the same things. But that's not what you mean by vulnerable, you mean the vulnerable, sad person whose emotions are all over the place. The tortured artist. Nobody else is like that other than people like you, Full Mac. White knight baiters like you who just project their weakness as something that is a real man when it's not. Hell, not even being an alpha is, is necessarily a real man. It's always something in between or whatever. That, that's my opinion. But... It's never what you or the PUAs say manhood is. Not only is all of this damaging behavior encouraged in individual men, but those same values are also reflected in our larger political and military institutions. It's only damaging when we go off to war, yet we also see women in the Kurdish army fighting. So have they got those traits, Full Mac? Because you say it's reflected in the army and politics. What about Margaret Thatcher or Hillary Clinton? Are they not true women? for being female politicians? Hmm, I smell bullshit. Often to disastrous effect. Thatcher destroyed uh, Britain's industrial base. We are no longer a very productive nation and we have loads of other problems that has been affected by her reign. Yet we don't see you quoting her. Or how about Hillary Clinton, who who you see as probably a shining example of a feminist, is, was, back in the day, because of public demand against gay rights but now because public opinion shifted she now is so please tell me again how it's damaging and why it's men's fault so while men as a group are afforded gender-based privileges at the expense of women go on name me these privileges citation needed full map a byproduct of patriarchy is that it also causes real harm to men's well-being this is the problem with your ideology Patriarchy is meant to help men to stay in power and it'll do everything it can to keep everything okay for them and brilliant. 
yet somehow men suffer from it. You see, if patriarchy was a real thing, like God, if it was a real thing, there would be no homeless men, only homeless women. Men's cancers would be as well researched and the research be as well funded as women's and all the other shit that I talked about. But it isn't, because patriarchy doesn't exist. It's not like that and you fucking know it, Full Mac. You know it to be true and you're just bullshitting at this point and you're projecting and you have no facts to back this up whatsoever, whereas I do. Oh, five tips. This is going to be goody, isn't it, people? Jesus Christ, look at your eyes, Full Mac. He's like you're on fucking crack. Okay, so if we're on board with ending sexism, what specifically can we do as men to be helpful? Become egalitarians and solve everybody's problems equally with equal effort. That's what I say, but that's not what you're going to say, is it, Full Mac? Here's our quick list of five tips for respectfully engaging with feminism as men. Why should I give a movement respect when it gives me no respect? I'm sorry, but respect is earned, not given. Listen to women. Oh, don't worry, Full Mac, I'm already pretending to, yeah. Whenever they tell me about how these people that they don't like is affecting them in some way, I just listen and go, sure, yeah, well, I play my games, yeah. Totally doing that, totally doing that, Full Mac, totally doing that. Hey, I'm willing to listen seriously as well, but, you know, if, if you want me to listen, I'm all ears. I am an open-minded person, but I don't think... By listen, that's what you mean. I think you mean listen and believe. I think that's what you mean, is it? Now, that might seem really obvious, but far too often men have a hard time just listening to what women have to say and respecting women's knowledge and experiences. Citation needed. That is an overgeneralization that's quite sexist. You see, what I said there was a joke because when women are nagging over the pointless shit, men don't listen. If a woman is talking about something that she has no clue, like she genuinely has no idea what she's on about, no, like you guys complain about mansplaining when we do it, men don't listen. Hell, women don't listen either, actually. Uh, but if it's a person who knows exactly what they're saying, they've got a leadership aura, they, or there's just something about them, you know, maybe they're experienced, maybe they're actually very important people that you need to listen to, or they're your boss, you listen to them. That's how it works. And I'm going to quote uh, Plato here, because I think this can be said for both men and women. Wise men speak because they have something to say. Fools, because they have to say something. And I think that sums it up there. And that's all I need to say. Because of the way we're socialised to think of our voices as most important, that is an assertion. What can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. Men have a tendency to interrupt and interject ourselves into conversations and then to dominate those interactions. So basically you want us to censor ourselves because we do what every other human being has ever done in the history of being a human being. Interrupting people and if their personality is strong enough, dominate a conversation. That's not even a male thing. Women do it too. I've seen women come from absolutely nowhere and through the force of their personality alone, dominate a conversation they were not originally privy to, or at least part of. And that's okay, that's not necessarily a bad thing. They might have something that's really good to say. They, it might end up being a really good conversation. And if they're really good at conversing, they have also could be very good at listening. I will, you know, once they finished talking, they can just sit back and let everyone else discuss shit. That is not a male thing, that is a female thing as well. But of course, when men do it, it's bad. But when women do it, it's fantastic, isn't it? It's empowering. This behaviour is so ingrained that men often don't even realise we're doing it. Yeah, uh, neither do women. Yet you're not complaining about women who interfere when men are talking about men's issues, darling. You know, we already listen to women, because otherwise we wouldn't have all these laws in favour of them. You know, domestic violence law overwhelmingly favours them. They've got all the shelters they could possibly imagine. They've got law on their side when it comes to the family courts, etc, etc. Yet, apparently we don't listen to them. <laughs> Incredible, isn't it? And here we are, we have women on panels, we have women as prime ministers, women as presidents, all over. Yet, we don't listen. Incredible, isn't it, people? Which is why it's critical to learn how to take a step back, to try not to interrupt, and instead, actively listen and absorb what is being said before responding. I know how to strike up a conversation, Full Mac. I know how to do that, but that's not what you're on about. You're on about listening and believing, to not say anything, to not let your voice be heard, to not give them any 
dissenting opinions that they may be triggered by. That's what you're on about. You just want us all to be silent, obedient little sheep for the feminist l uh, overlords, isn't it? That's what you want us to be. Well, I refuse to be that. Now, of course, this does not mean you have to agree with everything every individual woman says. But you want us to believe and listen to everything that they want, that they have to say. You have to agree with everything, because otherwise we're sexist. Am I right? Am I right? No one person's perspective can ever represent all of feminism or the experiences of all women. Yet yeah, you've only gone and done that to men. Well done. Well done, Macintosh. Well done. It simply means that we, as men, are not in a position to define feminism for women. Yet they're not in the position to define what's men's rights, yet they have. They've defined it as a hate movement, and now the mainstream media has been parroting that misinformation for the last 30 years. So, <laughs> can you please stop the bullshit and stop being such a hypocrite? And that we should actively pay attention to women's voices, because for so long, women's experiences women's perspectives and women's ideas have been dismissed, ignored, and silenced. Yet they're not in the position to define what's men's rights, yet they have. They've defined it as a hate movement, and now the mainstream media has been parroting that misinformation for the last 30 years. So, <laughs> can you please stop the bullshit and stop being such a hypocrite? It's especially vital to listen to women of colour, particularly black and indigenous women. You've only said the reason why I should listen to them is because they're skin coloured, not because of what they have to say. So no, I think I don't think I will listen to them based on that. If they have something constructive to say, I will. But until then, I'm going to ignore that advice, Full Matt. Because, as feminist scholars have long pointed out, sexism is compounded when it's combined with racism and other forms of oppression. Um, sexism is completely separate to racism. It is not compounded by either of those things. That is just a baseless assertion that can be dismissed without evidence. Back in 1989, Kimberly Crenshaw coined the term intersectionality as part of her theory to describe these layered experiences that leave some women more disenfranchised than others. Oh, otherwise known as a complete bullshit theory that has now resulted in even more inequality. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Oh god, those words, always thrown at me. I have to educate myself, because apparently, despite talking to a myriad of feminists and looking it all up on the internet and reading their literature, I just don't know as much as these bunch of Tumblrainers and these idiots who subscribe to their bullshit without actually reading the shit. I have to educate myself, sure. Y you see, most people don't have time for this shit. They just don't. But I mean, sure, you're much more educated than me on this. Sure. <laughs> Go on, Full Mac. Lecture me. It's important for us, as men, to acknowledge that when we talk about feminism, we follow the lead of women. Well, at least you're honest, it's a shame that when we talk about men's rights, we still have to follow their lead, even though, technically, by your logic, they should be following our lead. Yet while feminist ideas do originate with women, that does not mean that it's the responsibility of every woman to teach all men about sexism. Oh joy, we have to be the ones that do all the dirty work, as usual, since time immemorial, men have to do all the hard work while the women sit at home. Is that what you're trying to tell me, Full Mac? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Just for the information of all the feminists and insensitive people out there, that's called a joke. So we shouldn't go around interrogating or demanding answers from women. Do you mean debating them and demanding evidence for their wild claims? Is that what you're trying to say? Nobody's interrogating them. This isn't a bloody police state yet, but come on, nobody's interrogating women. We are simply asking for evidence to back up their claims of some oppressive system called the patriarchy. That's all we're asking for, but no, it's all pedantic bullshit for you guys. Who needs evidence when we need to control people, eh? Instead, we should be proactive in doing the work ourselves by committing to continuous, lifelong learning. So, submit to the propaganda machine, get brainwashed, and listen and believe. Alright, I'll get me coat. Lucky for us, over the past century, feminist scholars have written volumes on the topic. If they're scholars, I'm a weightlifter. So here are some suggested readings about feminism and how patriarchy operates as a social system. Oh goody, more material for my YouTube channel. Thanks, Jonathan. Feminism is for Everybody by Bell Hooks is a great place to start. I also recommend Feminism is for Nobody on YouTube. Though definitely put the will to change men, masculinity, and love at the very top of your list. All Bell Hooks so far. Come on, give us a bit of a right. Ah, yes, here it is. It's come along the horizon just now. Sociologist Alan G. Johnson's book, The Gender Knot, 
unraveling our patriarchal legacy, is also essential reading. Ah uh, yes, the token bloke. I don't know if you'll be having any other men, but I assume he is the token cishet white shit lord. And as an addendum to the bell hooks thing, why is it these feminists always think they know how men works, how masculinity works, etc, etc, yet they haven't got a fucking clue. Yet they always tell us not to think that we know everything about women. See, we don't claim as men and egalitarians, MRAs, anti-feminists, etc, that we know everything about women. We don't. We don't know everything about women. Not even women know everything about women. Yet they always do. They write constant literature about us and it's just spread lies and bullshit and pseudoscience about men. Misinformation, as you would put it, as a good propagandist. And it's all stuck. They flung so much shit that it's stuck on the wall and we can't get it out. So yeah, I'm pissed off at that. Bell Hooks knows fuck all about men. As well as This Bridge Called My Back, edited by Cherry Moraga and Gloria Anzaldúa. Ah yes, women doing the back-breaking work while a man sit at home doing nothing. <laughs> I'm only joking, feminists. For those interested in something written in a more academic language, check out Masculinities by R.W. Connell and her follow-up book, The Men and the Boys. You see, this is why I don't like you telling us that women should be taking the lead in all this bullshit, because then they take the lead in other shit that has nothing to do with them. Masculinity, things about men, etc, etc. They always claim to be the experts, that they know exactly how we work and what makes us tick. And they have to write literature about us, yet they know fuck all, and this is why patriarchy exists as a fucking concept. These feminists know nothing. Women, you do not understand men. The sooner you accept that, the better, because we accept we know nothing about you. We just tried to get on with you and all that shit, but never mind, never mind. You're all the masters of what it means to be a man. You all know exactly what masculinity is. Well done, you experts. Have a cookie. And the propaganda machine keeps on rolling. Challenge other men, otherwise known as brainwash other men. The place where men can be most helpful in regards to feminism is first within ourselves, and then amongst other men. Alright brothers, close off the mind, uh, read up all the propaganda, listen and believe. He's, Mac's gonna tell us how to be proper men. Patriarchy encourages men to buy into sexist thinking, and at the very least remain complacent in sexism through our silence. Again, more bullshit that has no citations, it's just an assertion, and I will dismiss this without evidence and just say it's patently false, because as we know, if patriarchy existed, this would be happening, but it isn't because men are pretty much aware of sexism right now, be it against themselves or against other women because they're being constantly harangued and told about it in mandatory consent classes and all this other bullshit that you guys have made men do. Yet we still are blind to it. Incredible. Simply the amount of times you harp on about it. So instead, step off the path of least resistance and dare to make yourself and other men uncomfortable about sexism. Oh, do you mean uncomfortable as in not talking about our own issues and allowing our brothers 13 a day in Britain, I might add you, to die while being only uncomfortable with one form, while completely comfortable with that that another exists, but we're, not, we're just going to forget about that because they're men and their lives are completely worthless. Is that what you're saying? Let the other men around you know that their sexist behaviour is not okay. Oh sure, and you are the moral arbiter and the one who knows exactly what sexism is. You're going to define it and that's going to be the definition of sexism. I've got to tell these people who may or may not actually be sexist that they're being sexist. So I've got to now control other men. I have to try and tell them what to do. I have to be an authoritarian, a totalitarian, do I? <laughs> Thanks. I guess if I become a rich, wealthy cunt like you, I too can be part of the bourgeoisie who are currently oppressing the lower classes. Yeah. I'll take a leaf out of your book. For example, when you stand up and say that a sexist joke is not funny, the men telling that joke can no longer be assured that they will go unchallenged the next time they tell it. Again, well, who decides that this joke is fucking sexist or not? So you want me to basically ruin all the fun? There can be no fun, there can be no humour unless it is ratified and has the feminist stamp of approval. Am I right? That is absolutely bullshit. You're just telling me to control the way people think and feel and what they should say. That goes against your First Amendment and my unwritten constitution, you idiot. In other words, those men can no longer count on other men to accept or go along with their sexism. But how do you know they're being sexist? And why should I turn on people I do not know or my friends or my family because they make a silly joke? 
they make a joke that doesn't mean anything. It's not even serious. You're attaching seriousness to a joke, Jonathan. Do you not hear how stupid that is? Interrupting the sexist status quo is a simple yet powerful way that all men can make a difference. But we don't live in that status quo that you have defined. We live in a very different status quo. We live in the world that ignores men's problems, but tries to solve all of women's problems. But of course, that's too much of an inconvenience for you to even think about and mention, isn't it, Full Macintosh? Oh brilliant, I can't defend my point of view, I just have to accept my feminist overlords and that their argument is the correct answer. Brilliant, thanks, I'll remember that. If you make a comment and a woman dismisses or disagrees with you, don't take it personally. Oh I'm sorry, I'm not the one who takes it personally, I'm not the one who deletes my friends over a difference of ideology, I'm not the one who basically went on someone's status, my status, and wrote something completely in opposite of what I was talking about because I talked about Mattress Girl and then deletes me because I defended my point of view who told me to change my opinion because they thought it was wrong oh and another person deleted me just by watching this unfold and rather than you know challenge me just goes off and deletes me because she can't be having anyone interfering with her echo chamber can she? oh but apparently I'm the one who can't be defensive I don't get offended by that shit. You do. That is projection. She doesn't owe you anything, and her disagreement does not necessarily mean that she's angry or frustrated with you as an individual. Every debate I've ever had with a feminist has come up with that. Almost every one of them. Only a few of it as it ended amicably. The rest have been horrible. They think I'm a nasty human being just because I'm not subscribing to their ideology. I don't owe them anything, yet apparently they think I ought to owe them something. I don't owe them shit. This is our projection. This is just the projection thing going on now, people. I mean, it's been throughout, but this is the main minute. No, oh, how, how long he's going to take him to get through this bullshit. That being said, it's completely understandable for women to express anger about sexism. Ah, uh, but the MRAs, their anger is completely unjustifiable, isn't it? Egalitarian anger is also unjustifiable because we also fight for men as well as we fight for women. So, yeah, ours is just, you know, misplaced. It's just, why are you angry? You're privileged. But when women are angry, when feminists are angry, it's understandable, justifiable. Thanks. Sexism should make everyone angry. Yeah, it does. Like, your face makes me angry. Like, your sexist views make me angry. Your ideology makes me angry. But never mind. After all, most women have some first-hand experience with violence, or harassment, or mistreatment at the hands of men. <laughs> what has that got to do with this? That is a complete non-sequitur and has nothing to do with a disagreement or taking anything personal. You trying to make me feel like a violent, horrible person. I will take that personally. I will take all those ad hominems personally because that is not how you win a debate and I do not like being misrepresented. And that's funny that you mention all that bullshit. Let's just discuss that for a minute. How about the equal number of men who have suffered violence at the hands of women and have not had their voices heard because people don't take them seriously because of people like you? Sometimes, even men who claim to be allies. You hear that, Steve Shives? You better watch yourself, because if you step out of line, you will be destroyed by these people. They don't even trust you. Male feminists. This is a male feminist telling you that the likes of him and you cannot be trusted by female feminists because you may or may not hurt a woman in any way. It might not even be violent. That's just an extreme thing. That's an overly emotive language being used there. You are a danger to the movement because of your sex. If that isn't sexism, I don't know what is. How can he get up there and tell me that here are ways for me to basically help combat sexism while telling me that I'm not welcome, that he's not welcome, that we are a danger to this movement. Although technically I am a danger because I'm, dis I'm a dissenting voice, but that's besides the point, you know? Male feminists are a danger to other feminists because of their sex. What are we? Are we allies or are we not allies? Or are we feminists or not feminists? Please tell me. I'm just wondering. I'm not saying I am one. I'm just wondering. Can men be them or not? Because it seems to me that there's no point being one. Because you haven't decided for yourselves. 
So don't get defensive if individual women don't want to engage with you. Oh fine, don't let them debate because they won't even stand up to my logic and facts anyway. I don't give a shit. Although it would be nice if they did. I mean, that's just you excusing uh, bloody Anita for not debating people. That's all that is. That is an excuse. And how dare you lecture me on taking things personally? How dare you after you sat there and slandered the entire male gender? Thank you. Thank you for that, Full Macintosh. Thank you very much. And remember that it's definitely not our job to police the ways that women may choose to speak about sexism or their experiences. Yet they are free reign to police what we say and what other women say. That doesn't make sense. I think that's quite unfair. That's quite sexist. So we police ourselves, but we can't police them if they step out of line. Is that correct? That is a dumb line of reasoning. Men's support for feminism should not be seen as some kind of favour to women. Really? Because that's exactly how you view it. Because men aren't good enough being allies, but they're not good enough being feminists either. It's just a favour. You're literally telling us to do a favour for women and do all the fucking legwork. That's literally what you're arguing. As we've discussed, dismantling the system of sexist beliefs benefits people of all genders. But it's not an inherently sexist system. It has elements of sexism within it, but that's more disproportionate towards men nowadays than it is towards women because of feminism. And moreover, men shouldn't expect a reward for deciding not to participate in a terrible system of oppression. I expect no reward from anyone. That doesn't even make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. What the hell? <laughs> or, as many feminists have said before, you don't get a cookie for being a decent human being. What the fuck? Who said that? That's a horrible way of viewing the world. But as we always say to you guys, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Learn from your own before you lecture us about learning from our mistakes, cunt. It's really hard to break years of socialization overnight, so messing up is inevitable. You see, unlike you, I don't view humans as socialized automatons that have no mind of their own. I view people as individuals, not a collection of sheep, not a herd. So I choose to view myself as not someone who's socialized, but someone who is shaped by the experiences around him and what he learns. Yes, I know I'm ex referring to myself in the third person, but bear with me. I am not a sheep. I am not an automaton. I am not someone that you can program. I am not socialized. I make my own choices and views in my life. I have certainly made my fair share of mistakes. The key is what you do next. Oh boy, have you ever, and it might just bring the downfall of your movement. I hope you enjoy that. We always have a choice in how we respond to our mistakes. So be humble, examine your own actions, acknowledge failings, and continue to learn how to be better and more supportive. Oh, of course, and their virtues that female feminists have in droves. Yeah, of course, amazing. We have to have all that bullshit, but they don't. Yeah, because they've already got it. They're humble and they learn from their mistakes rather than committing the same bullshit mistakes time and time again that it's so easy to refute. Yeah, sure, I'll be humble about it. Sexism is not necessarily something always done consciously. Oh no, it's something evil and dark deep inside your mind. Basically what he's saying is that it can be whatever he wants sexism to be and if he doesn't like you, everything you do can be sexist or if he does like you, little things can be sexist. That's what he's on about. He's not saying that it is unconscious. It, it's that it's easily definable in the way that he thinks it should be. He's just trying to redefine the word. Ignore it. It's something we're socialized to think is normal. And as such, it's something we often participate in without even meaning to. Citation needed. He's just trying to shame everything that you do so that you bend to his will, people. Don't listen to him. This is why challenging ourselves and reflecting on our own actions is a vital step in the process. But remember to be compassionate and patient with yourself and keep working at it. Right, and you've shown a loads of compassion in this video, not a cold, callous attempt at propagating this bullshit, hateful ideology. Yeah, sure. This is by no means an exhaustive list of advice. No, it's a shit advice, that's what it is. But it should give you a place to start. Uh, no, it hasn't at all. I don't think it has at all. Oh dear, full Mac, if only you knew. Now, if you're feeling a little uneasy at this point, that might actually be a good sign.
No, no it's not. Not if I'm feeling uneasy. That means I'm very angry and really annoyed at the bullshit that you've just spewed. What, are you trying to say that I have drank the poison Kool-Aid with a blue pill and that's just the side effects? Brilliant. As men, the process of honestly re-examining our own assumptions and questioning our participation in sexism will often feel uncomfortable. Again, with the horrible generalizations and the guilt by association bullshit as usual, you've told us not to do that to women, but you've just gone around and done it to us. You know, your own bloody gender. Incredible, isn't it? Apparently, we're all participating in sexism. How? Explain that. Citation needed. How dare you smear the whole of men because of the actions of a few? Incredible. It's like if I said women are propagating all this bullshit by not doing anything. That would be a horrible, fallacious argument. But hey, it's okay when you guys do it, isn't it? And this is why feminists rely on useful idiots like you. Most of the very anti-male articles and shit, you know, the ones that want to end masculinity, are written by men, because if a woman did that, it would be rightfully viewed as sexism. But if a man does it, it's not so bad, is it? But remember that even though we as individuals didn't create the system of patriarchy because it doesn't exist, it does manifest itself in almost every aspect of our lives, which means we do have a responsibility to challenge it. How do we challenge something that doesn't exist? What we should be challenging is the fact that 90% of the homeless are men, that boys are failing in education, that 60% of the population in universities are female when it should actually be 50-50 because it's a place of education, not a place of supremacy. But that's what you guys have created. Not us, not the anti-feminists, not the traditionalists. That's what you have created. But it's okay when the inequality is shifted to the other side, isn't it? We must always recall our potential for positive impact in the world and be involved in this work not out of personal guilt or shame, but because, as we've discussed in this video, the desired outcome is ending gender-based oppression and making the world a better place for people of all genders, including men. Well, that's exactly how you and all the others got into feminism. Because of shame. Because of some crazy, stupid guilt that these feminists have injected into you. That is why you're, you're feminist. That's why you have made this video and you have used those techniques, those shaming techniques, those shaming language to influence more men to become brainless, idiotic beta males who are feminists. And I won't stand for that. What you've done is a Nazi-style, communist-style, take your pick, propaganda video where you basically are telling men how to be good little tools for feminism. To listen to their betters, to not speak when they're not spoken to. You know, like what Victorian era type bullshit. Amazing how it's all flipped, isn't it people? But anyway, this is the end of the video. I hope you have fun watching this. I certainly did not have fun watching his video. So until next time, see you later.